Hello all and welcome to Music Minute, the hot theory guide to learn those extra concepts the right way, brought to you by StephenJax.com. My name is Steve and today I have a question for you. Have you ever woken up and thought, I really want to write a fugue today, but I don't know how the form works and I wish I knew how the form works because I really want to write a fugue today. Well, today's your lucky day. We're going to cover fugue form. So first off, the fugue is a polyphonic form, which means that there are many melodies playing at one time. Generally, fugues will have three to five voices. Let's see how the voices are introduced. When a voice first comes in, it starts with something called the subject. The subject is your most important melody figure in the entire fugue. In fact, it'll generally come back over and over again. We'll see that in a little bit. After the first voice is finished with its subject, the second voice will come in with its subject. The difference is that the second subject will generally be at the dominant of the first key. While the second voice is going on, the first section actually has another role. It becomes the counter subject. The counter subject is the second most important part in the fugue because it accompanies and supports that main melody. After the first two voices in, it's kind of common to have a little bridge section. The bridge section is just an interlude that acts as filler between the first voice and the second voice and the rest of the voices. After the optional bridge, your third voice and maybe your fourth voice and possibly your fifth voice would come in in similar fashion like this. The third voice will come in with its subject on the tonic. While the rest of the voices come in, the first voice is just turned into accompaniment. As you can see, each of the voices has its own life cycle. First you have a subject, and then it turns into the counter subject, and then it turns into random counterpoint. This entire first part of the fugue is called the exposition. The exposition is officially over when your last voice comes in with the subject. It doesn't even have time to go to the counter subject. And as a final note on the exposition system, it doesn't matter what order your voices come in. You can start with your high voice or your low voice just as long as all your voices eventually come in one at a time. After the exposition system, you have a part called the development section. The development section is actually two parts broken up over and over again, like this. First you have an episode and then a subject section, and then it repeats to an episode and back to a subject section, and then an episode again, you get the idea. The job of the episode is to modulate to a different key. The goal of the subject section is to bring your full subject back. That's it. So in the episode section, you can have pretty much whatever you want, as long as it's modulating and as long as you don't have full iterations of the subject's melody. Generally, it's common to see little fragments of the subject and counter subject sequenced and modulated to a new key. Common places to go to in your episode are the dominant or the relative major or minor from your tonic key or stuff like that. You can tell you're in a subject section because you can see a full iteration of the subject. Generally, your subject will revolve around a new tonic and it's very easy to tell what key you've gone to based on this method. A subject section can have just one iteration of a subject or two or three in a row and they can even be layered like you start one and then halfway through you start another one and you start another and you, st and you start again and again. That is called stretto. Stretto is a very good way to build suspense and anticipation, especially later on in the fugue. With the episode and subject pattern, you'll be able to go to any key you want. However, it's really common to eventually circle back to your tonic key. Most fugues will end in their tonic key. So you have the exposition section and the development section. You put them together and you have a fugue. That's pretty much it. So to drive this point home, I've created a fugue for you guys and we'll look at it together. I've labeled every single piece we've talked about so far and I hope you enjoy.
Thanks for watching this week's episode of Music Minute. If you have any comments or questions or you have an idea for a future episode, or if you just like fugues as much as Bach did, you can let me know on Facebook, the comments below, or directly email me at my website, stephenjacks.com. And don't forget to subscribe for more Music Minutes.